Hello and welcome to match one with Green White Value Town or Green White Company. Uh, <clears throat> we are on the draw and this hand is not great. Too many four drops, too many three drops, and not enough lands. Pretty easy mulligan. Uh, again, another easy mulligan, no colored mana. Uh, opponent also mulligan, which is uh, helpful, although we're going down to five and they're staying at six. Uh, we're doing it, not going to four. Scry that to the bottom, as it's not green mana. We are on the draw, so that helps. Uh, we're playing against humans. This is not ideal. Yep. Uh, we might just be a little too slow, especially with this hand against humans. Um, but we do have the added benefit of them currently not knowing what we're on, so that's helpful. Uh, Athalia here would be kind of annoying, as we have two paths, but... Fortunately, they do not have Vesalia, just have another Thraven Inspector, we will take our beats. I don't feel like ramping them, and there's no reason to pass just a 1-1, and there is a god. We have drawn a Winslow Teeth, and we will crack it and get a Temple Garden untapped, and play this voice. The reason to play the voice over the Scoos is because if they have a path, I would much rather the voice get path than the Scoos, as I believe the Scoos can get large and in charge and can gain us some life and help stem some of the bleeding, where... They don't really cast spells on our turn. They, I don't think this particular deck has any instants or sorceries of any kind in the main deck or in the sideboard. I think they just play four vials and then the rest are creatures. So this voice is really just a 2-2 two -two for two, and if they have any pass in the main deck, then go ahead and spend it on this. That's fine. Uh, this appears to be a meddling mage. Shocker. Uh, I'm not sure what it's going to name. Probably going to be Collected Company. Maybe Path. Path would be a good name. Uh, I mean, obviously bad for us. Yep. <clears throat> not ideal. Hopefully we can trade for that thing in combat. Uh, they're not going to attack here unless they just want to poke us for one, which, not that they would, but they could. Um, so we have a couple of choices here. Obviously not these paths, unfortunately. So we can play this bird in hopes to set up for next turn. We can play another voice. And just start to amass creatures and we, or we could play the scoos and again try to set up for next turn but i think the line right now is just to attack and see what they do and then go from there because if they block nope they're just taking it so the line is to play this voice if they had double blocked with the two thriven inspectors and we traded for one uh the line was probably going to be to play the bird and then pass but since they didn't i want to be able to trade with the meddling mage if they choose to attack with it, so. Uh, <clears throat> not sure what the correct line is, but this is what we're doing. Uh, yeah, you can take one of the paths we can't cast. So now he's never going to do anything with that meddling mage related to attacking. Unless there is a surefire thing like that it's going to get through because he sees these two paths in our hand and if we ever get to, you know, cast them, we're definitely hitting that free booter and then we're going to hit something else, so. Probably just a pass here. There's no need for him to get aggressive. Alright, we drew an excavator, so the line, I believe, is fairly simple. Since we have the Excavator, uh, but no third land, we want to play this bird so we can cast the Excavator next turn, and then we can play the Windswept Heath out of our graveyard, and then start casting our spells. Uh, so I'm just going to attack with these two voices, put them down to 13. Uh, the reason to attack with both of them is I don't feel I'm under a whole lot of pressure just yet, Maybe mistaken, because, like, here comes a Thalia's lieutenant. Um, and, but, anyway. Oh, another meddling mage. I'm just trying to guess what my opponent's on. Yep, so this is going to name Scavenging Ooze, or it's going to name Path again, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but, 
we're just fortunate they didn't have a Cowboys lieutenant. It was probably a greedy attack on my part, but I just feel I need to pressure them as much as I can in hopes to establish a board. Uh, yep, there's the scavenging news name. Um, not really surprised. Uh, Noble Hierarch is fine. Just need to hope and pray that they don't have a payoff. Uh, payoff being Thalia's lieutenant. Um, Thalia herself is kind of annoying because, like, at, at currently we're one land and, you know, actually drawing a company away from just casting them and getting two creatures. Uh, but... Interesting. But Athalia herself would be annoying mostly because of the first strike, to be honest. Uh, so, we can crack the fetch land, we can play the excavator, crack the fetch land, and go from there. Or, we can try to take them off their mana. They just played Hierarch, so that's not going to be, you know, a surefire. But, I think excavator into ghost quarter is gonna have to be the line because they only play one basic more often than not so during their draw step i'm going to hit their horizon canopy is either their no their horizon canopy hurts them so i'm just going to hit the cavern of souls the reason i wait till their draw step is i'm giving them a chance to draw the actual basic in their deck because usually they only play one or two. And what I'm trying to do is, really, I'm just trying to get them. Uh, probably going to crack a clue, I imagine. Um, so, like, if, if they did draw it, then this is just actually Wasteland. I don't think that they should crack a clue in response to this. I think they should just float the mana, let it resolve, and then... Because now they're giving themselves a greater chance to draw the actual basic that's in their deck so if they draw it and then this becomes wasteland then this is just great for me although they do just get to play the basic but not ramping them or I don't know it's just not correct lines of play there's no real technical reason to or not to do it aside from just gives them extra chances of drawing the basic, but again, there's only one, so... The odds aren't really high. Oh, this is what we were afraid of. Uh, probably just gonna block with these voices if they attack with the 3-3s. Three I'll probably just block the ones... Like, if they can't attack with either Meddling Mage, because I'll just double block. I could even go so far as to triple block, but I'm not gonna lose this Excavator, because I feel it's gonna be the only way we win the game. Aside from drawing huge dude, uh, another excavator is not ideal. Uh, we are just going to play this and hit their ziggurat as the canopy hurts them. So we want as much of that as possible. Uh, I, I more or less called this game in my opponent's favor. So all I'm really doing right now is just trying to get as much information as I can. I could send with a voice, but I think I would rather leave it to block. The reason to send with the voice would be to have a huge dude to uh, block his huge dudes, but it looks like my opponent is going to take a more conservative and more than likely correct line in just attacking with a freebooter uh, for three every turn because of the exalted trigger. And it's going to take a, a miracle or a wrath of god that we don't play in our deck for us to win. Oh, we are dead. I'm not going to concede, just because they could mess up, but we are uber dead. Alright, let's see what the opponent does. If he attacks with everything, I'm going to do everything in my power to kill that mentally mage, but it looks like he's just going to make this a two-turn clock with that freebooter. This is a matchup I am very much trying to prepare for, for the open. Uh, yeah, we are done here. Uh, let's just try to get some more information out of my opponent, I suppose. Um, never concede, because... Oh, we can... I guess we can block. Yeah, we can block for a turn. I should have played the voice. This is what I get for not paying attention. I'm sure it's fine, though. Like, even if we did play the voice, we only have one turn, and we'd have to draw another bird, and... There's a lot of hoping and praying going on that 
is just yeah, it's not a real realistic possibility for us to win. Yep, that's a Thalia's lieutenant. <laughs> yup. Pony gets his triggers, all his dudes are huge. <clears throat> yep. That's, uh, that's a lot of dudes attacking. Not a lot of dudes attacking. Uh, we'll block. Sure. <laughs> alright, yeah, alright, we're, uh, yeah. Nope. No, thank you. I've had enough. Alright. <clears throat> so I have to say, this isn't really a matchup I am super prepared for with this deck. We didn't draw terribly well, so that's kind of annoying, but here we are. So, here's what I'm thinking. I think these five cards are all semi-relevant. Uh, the gain life, oh no, I didn't want you to do that. The gain life on bust lines and the sacking attacking creatures, uh, potentially even on tapping two target creatures, all have merits. Uh, Gaining pro life helps stem the bleeding. Uh, untap two target creatures to set up blocks in a to set up blocks in a more favorable way for us. Also, I can target phantasmal images to make them sacrifice, and then of course just the removal spell aspect of it alone. Uh, the Quasali Pride Mage because they play Ether Vial. Uh, it's also a, not a small body, so it can help me get aggressive. Uh, the Reclamation Sage was another one I was looking at, again, because of Vile, but I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, this is kind of one of those corner cases where, uh, like I mentioned previously, I bring it in in case of X or because I think something is there, but there's not enough of it to warrant the just trigger and it happens ability on Rex Sage, where <clears throat> I can hit this and it can sit around for a while. Uh, these... I'm going to start by cutting these voices for sure. Uh, this Whisper Wood might also be okay. Uh, Ava Mind Sensor also has its merits, but I don't think it's even worthwhile. Uh, really, its its merit is it blocks the Freebooter. Um, but I think Whisper Wood is pretty large and in charge, and I think he can help me take over the game. Uh, the Azusa Redmap Excavator combo, I think, is still, with Ghost Quarter, is very alive in this matchup. So I'm going to leave all that in. Uh... Eternal Witness was another card I was looking at. I think I just want to grind, too, so that's kind of why I'm considering her. Uh, let's, we have 28 hits for Collected Company. The General Wisdom is 26. I think I'm safe cutting the Avacyn's Pilgrim here and running it back like this. All right. Uh, Sands, pretty good pretty okay. It doesn't really... I'm, I'm scared of a fast start from them, but I think that this hand is good enough that we can make it work with some draws. Uh, I will lead on the bird, as green-white decks often do. Canopy for the opponent, and... We are waiting. A oh, hierarch, sure. Alright, so we drew Misty, so we are going to play the Azusa and the Kosali Pride Mage, I think. Just dump our hand as quickly as we can. We need to put pressure on the opponent to get a basic, because they don't play any spells, really. I mean, they could play Path, but we play enough basics that I'm not terribly worried about it. And then, Kosali Pride Mage. Your go, opponent. So the reason I did that as opposed to playing the knight is I just want to get as much pressure on the battlefield as I possibly can because their fast starts are better than my fast starts, generally. But I think that I just need to attack them as much as I can. Uh, Alright, so Reflector made sure for my opponent. Uh, most likely bouncing the Azusa? Quasali Pride Mage. Sure, that's fine. It does have the biggest body, so that makes sense. 
not a bad line by any means by our opponent. Uh, so now I'm just going to play this knight as a 3-3 three, three and have the ability to make it a 4-4 four, four and send it back to my opponent. I could path something, but I don't think either of these creatures are the, the correct target for a path to exile. Uh, if I see a meddling mage, I'm just going to fire it off so that way he can't name it and strand two more in my hand like he did in the previous game. I would love a ghost quarter in here, so I'm really hoping to untap with my knight. What is this, Anafenza? Sin Collector. Alright, so... With the trigger on the stack. I would like to... Get rid of it. Uh, I'm choosing that one over the, the Reflector Mage. Because I don't want phantasmal, future Phantasmal Images copying it. Uh... When I have a company in my hand that I can't cast, and I feel Clutch Company is going to be the most valuable card in this matchup. <laughs> Maybe Path, too. Uh, but I think that Collected Company is definitely going to have its work cut out for it. Uh, sure, I'll take four. Alright, we got to one tap with an Active Knight, and we drew a company. So everything's coming up Millhouse, and we are just going to pass. No need to get... Aggressive. We could have attacked the Zusa. He wouldn't have blocked, but it uh, it doesn't seem relevant enough for. Uh, so he drew the planes. So that means our ghost quarters are wastelands. See, this is what I was talking about. Just another. I mean, fortunately, in a spot we can cast the company, and <clears throat> although I would have hated to have this get trained in my hand because I couldn't cast it. So, playing around uh, Phantasmal Image or other Sin Collectors, I think, is worthwhile. Uh, Alright, we found the Ghost Quarter. So, he gets to look at our Kosali Prime Mage, which we knew he had, He knew we had, and we have a Ghost Quarter on top, which is everything we could have hoped and dreamed for. Uh, gross. Alright, so, night that, uh... Reflector Mage is a 3-4, we can make our Knight a 4-4, four, four. it's going to come in as a 5-6 if it does, and it chose not to attack with it. Um, Alright, so because we have Knight and Corsair and Azusa, we can play lands off the top like Mad Men. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to activate the Knight to start making it bigger. Um, in this spot, I'm going to get... I'm between Ghost Quarter and uh, Fetch Land. Knight's a 4-4, we can make it a 5-5 five five with just a Ghost Quarter, or we can make it, a, I think, or we could get Gavney Township and try to play that game and just match him one for one with counters on our creatures, and I think that's the correct line with how many lands we're about to get. Uh, <clears throat> speaking of, another land on top for us. And another one, just as DJ Khaled predicted. So, I'm just going to play all the lands we see. Uh, Path to Exile is a card I most certainly would like. So I'm going to crack the canopy to draw it, and... Oops, sorry. Uh, my up, at their upkeep, I'm going to path their Reflector Mage, as it is very scary. Uh, we don't want that High Relic on top of our deck, so we are just going to fetch it away. Uh, get a basic. Another Path is fine. The life gain here is also relevant. Uh, I am just going to... I could just attack. He could double block. He's not blocking, right? So, he could double block, and we crack our fetch land and eat both of his guys. He could triple block with, or quadruple block, with any of his dudes. Unnecessary math, as our opponent has conceded. They do not want to play magic anymore. So... Given that, do we make any changes? I don't believe so. Uh, on the draw, I don't think we play any different. Elspeth could have some merits, but I think it's just too slow. I think Whisperwood is just slow enough to work. Uh, especially since it... Mm, maybe on second thought, the, this thing does kill all of his huge dudes. So maybe I play that over... The Eternal Witness?
I think that makes sense. Tireless Tracker is kind of slow, but it also gets huge and generates me card advantage. Uh, Kitchen Finks isn't huge, but it trump blocks like a champion and gains me life and it keeps me in the game. Um, knights are what won me that match. Uh, Kostali Pride Mage is fine. Yeah, I think I think this. I think this is the right way to go about it. I think Elspeth is a fine top end. It seems really slow, but you saw how fast we can ramp into our mana, especially with the Nazusa. So, I don't know, it could have its merits. You saw how huge their creatures can get, like in game one. Um, so, that's something we need to consider as just a kind of conditional board white but still hits all their dudes is very valuable. Alright, this hand is really slow. But it has two payoffs. So I'm gonna try it and pray. Payoffs being the elemental in the company. Azusa on turn three isn't bad either. Uh ideally we can draw something that's relevant. Sure, you can have a hierarch. Um Another land, uh, not great, not the worst. Uh, just gonna play out the Windswept Peeth and Crockett for Temple Garden. Um, <clears throat> and then if we don't draw anything, I'm probably just gonna do that again, just because we want to get the fetch lands out of the way for future knights. And also getting the shock lands in untapped is, you know, also has merit. Uh, Mantis Rider here? Sure. Uh, just gonna crack this now, we get our F6 value. And then I plan on Blessed Alliance that next turn. Pretty confident they won't play around it. As they have no reason to. Alright, so I'm just going to play this once up teeth and send it back. We drew a knight, which is another payoff. I think if we can live, that we can potentially take control of this game. Uh, and assuming they don't have an insane amount of gas in their hand. Oh, not a freebooter. Please, not a freebooter. Anything but a freebooter. It's a freebooter. Uh, so that kind of messes with our Bus Alliance line. So, well, can, we can... So this is going to resolve. I'm just going to stop him with a trigger on the stack. So, Company is obviously the payoff, but we're not getting to it for a minute. Um, he's probably going to take the Bus Alliance, and I think that's okay. Uh, if he takes the company, we're super okay with that. He could just play around the Blessed Alliance by attacking with the Hierarch, but then he misses out the Exalted Trigger. Um, so we're probably going to see the Blessed Alliance go into that Freebooter here in a second. So, Path would be a good draw. Yeah, Path would be the ideal draw, I think. Because we can go Ghost Quarter, and then when he attacks... With the Freebooter and the Rider, we can path the Kite Sail, pick up the Blessed Alliance, and then Blessed Alliance make them sack. Um, if they take the company and attack with the Hierarch, do we still Blessed Alliance them? They do have a lot of mana, and... <sighs> Alright, so we're probably going to see the attack with the Hierarch, too. So, do we just keep him honest and force him to sack? I don't think we do. I think that we just wait a turn, play the Azusa. Hmm. Awkward. Alright, well, we're going to play the Azusa. And... Look to Blessed Alliance with two modes. Uh, the reason to play the Azusa over the night is that Azusa lets us ramp into turn 4, which is what we've been trying to get to this whole time. Uh, so they can safely attack with the Mantis Rider, which is fine. We're taking 4. Um, hoping to gain that back next turn, so we drew land. Does that change anything? They also have a vial, which is semi-relevant. I'm not sure what they would be vialing in at this point. 
Uh, I feel that that's probably a couple of lands in their hand. Or Reflector Mages. Also relevant. So, the question becomes... So, what's, what's going to happen... Alright, actually, something that occurred to me... I need to make sure I set an end combat stop. Um, is... What they might do is they might attack with all three guys, and then we bust lines on two modes to gain four life and to make them sack. We do that after damage, when we block the Hierarch with Azusa, so that way we definitely get one of these two. Because um, they can't violin anything, and as far as I know, there's nothing in that deck that gets ha that has haste. So either we're getting our company back, or we're killing their Mantis Rider post-combat. We still take four. But we go back up to 7, and we still need to deal with that Mantis Rider. But I don't think anything else is going to deal with it better than this. So, I think the line is just to pass and hope to get him. So, he, what he might do, and which would be really unfortunate, is to play Reflector Mage and bounce the Azusa. We could get punished here, but... Oh, please crack it. Oh, okay. So that's a good sign for us. He's trying to find a Reflector Mage or something, or just anything. Uh, he found another Vile. That makes our Quasali Prime Mage kind of sad. Alright, so let's see what he does. Yeah, Alright, so... Called it. We're going to block here. Go to damage. Yep, that's fine. Go to three. End of combat two modes. Target player gains for a sacrifice. These are still in combat, so they are still considered attacking creatures. That's why this works. Um, although we've already gone through damage, we're still in the attack step. So now we're back up to seven, and... All they have is a 1-2, because they did not want to give us back our company, which, I mean, don't blame them. Uh, so we have a couple options now. They just have a 1-2, but they have two vials. Uh, I don't know that we care to kill them, because they can just cast whatever. So I think the line is to... There's there's one of two things that we could do. Uh, playing the Whisper Wood and start getting dudes on the battlefield, I think is very relevant. We can get all of our spells, and that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, Knight has also got the potential to get large and in charge, but I think the correct line is to play this Whisperwood and try to hit more creatures with it. Um, I'm not going to attack with the Azusa in case uh, he ambushes it with something. Uh, let's see what we got. We got a forest. So this is also the reason to play... Whisperwood is we mill over things like forest that we really didn't really want to draw. So <clears throat> it helps filter some of our dead draws because we can cast any creatures and that's what's most important to us right now. So tag, that's fine. We're at six. He's got a vial on one and a vial on two. Draw a land. So I think step one is play Quasali Pride Mage, play this land. Play out the night, just dump our hand. Um, and then before combat, we're going to kill the Violent 2. Alright, so our opponent is just F6'd, so we're just going to do whatever the hell we want. Uh, we'll attack for 7 here. Uh, we could Ghost Quarter them, but I feel like our lands are kind of important right now. Um, path milled over. That's kind of unfortunate. That's kind of what I was worried about, but here we are. Because I'm pretty sure we can only cast creatures, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm fairly confident we can only cast creature spells. So, how do we lose this game? Reflector Mage is not ideal, because it can bounce both of our manifests. Or we can just win because our opponent concedes. Also works. Uh, thank you for joining me here for match one. I will be back with match two shortly.